Welcome to the Volunteer Corner. I'm here with a really key person when it comes to volunteers. This is Emma Zabitz. Now, Emma at the food bank handles both the volunteers and, and the events. Uh, and you, you've you been doing that for how long? It hasn't been very long. No, just a uh, year anniversary. So, wow. yep. That's amazing. And um, it's one thing to come into an organization and to help with volunteers. But it's another thing to come into an organization that has 3,000 volunteers. Right? Yes. So I know you don't see them all, but you see lots of them down at the food bank and elsewhere. But how did you find that? You started at the food bank and suddenly there are all these people around and you had to... How was that for you? It, it was great, honestly. Um, it's really nice working in a place where you're not only working with just a small staff, but you're working with a community of people. I have yeah. a new group of people coming in um, 10 times out of the week. So we have mm. two shifts up front in direct client services um, uh, twice a day and then five times a week. So yeah. it's so many different people that you get to know. Um, so it was, it was really nice just to learn their stories, um, what they did when they were working, what they're doing now, why they want to be at the food bank. Um, so it's it's just really nice and mm. working with people that really want to be there and really want to make a difference. Yeah. Um, it was it was quite lovely. And speaking of stories, what's yours? What's your background and how did you end up at the food bank? Uh, so I am from a small town just outside of London, Melbourne. Um, right? Melbourne, yeah. Yep. yeah. Um, so then I moved to the big city of Ottawa and mm. I went to Carleton University. Um, so I went for criminology with the goal of being a police officer. Um, and then I learned that that might not be best for me. Mm. So I was looking more to get into public services and maybe having mm. more of a social worker type of role. I always had the goal of helping people. Um, so now, police officer. Let's yeah. stop there. Did, did that come in part from your parents or was it just something that was in yourself? Um, I think it, I think it largely came from my mom. Yeah. Okay. Um, she is been a mental health worker. Um, she is a nurse um, mm. at the forensic hospital in St. Thomas. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think just growing up hearing all of the stories of her helping people that are suffering from poverty and mental health issues. Yeah. I think that that really had a lot to do with it. Mm. Um, so I think her being my role model is had a lot to do with that pivot. Um, and then I was applying for some summer jobs in between school programs, and I came across the food bank posting for a Canada summer mm -hmm. grant job. I remember and that. Yeah, yes, yeah. so yeah. I did two summers um, mm -hmm. in that Canada summer grant role in direct client services at the food bank. Mm -hmm. Um, and I really just fell in love with the community mm. that exists at the food bank yeah. and helping the London community. It's a really, a really special thing to be a part of. So when the volunteer and events coordinator position became available, I, I jumped at it. How did your parents feel about you coming to a food bank to work? Um, I think my mom was really excited. Was my mom, good? my mom <laughs> always just wanted me to do what made me happy. Yeah. Um, and helping people makes me really happy. Mm -hmm. um, and I think my dad is the same. He really just wanted me to also just be happy in whatever I'm doing. And so I think they were really supportive. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm really lucky that way. I have some great parents. Um, you, you don't just do volunteers, you do events. Now, we don't tend to have a lot of events as a food bank. We just have a lot of people yes. right, doing stuff, but occasionally there are events. But, but what would some of your responsibilities be there? Yeah, so um, volunteer appreciation is one. Yeah, so we do much. have um, our two annual events. So we have one coming up at the end of the month, which is our volunteer appreciation barbecue. Yeah. Um, so I am planning that right now. And then we do have our volunteer appreciation uh, Christmas dinner as well. So yeah, I that's do, a big one. Yeah. yeah so yeah. I do um, help out coordinating those events as well. Um, any community events, um, the other communities, uh, agencies that we partner with, yeah. any events that come up. So the Tampon Tuesday event, for example, yeah. I do help out with those as well. Um, hosting those, just welcoming people and showing mm -hmm. them around the food bank. Um, it's really... Uh, really amazing to see how many people are interested to learn about the food bank so yeah. just touring people around the food bank showing them mm. the different uh, processes that we have and just uh, educating people on what we're all about yeah. um, is something that I do help out at those events and then going to um, check presentations for all of the 
uh, wonderful donations we get from other community members as well. And I remember seeing you in Tim Hortons uh, six months ago or whatever it is, did yes. their Smile Cookie campaign. I mean, mm-hmm. nobody knew how big that was going to be, but I remember you were there at the launch with us. Yes. And, uh, man, they sold out almost right away, right? It was they only did. a five-day campaign, but they ended up raising over $200,000 just in this area, Incredible. right? Incredible. But I remember you being there and, and all the people there all taking part. It, uh, it, it would be an interesting thing for you there because really, although Jane and I were there, really a whole bunch of the community was there. Yes. And the fact that it was Tim Hortons was kind of iconic. Right? Yes. But, uh, but that's the kind of thing you do, right? You'd be coming to those kind of things and helping to organize them. Yeah, right? absolutely. And when it comes to volunteers, do you, um, do you see a certain type of person that certainly that, that becomes a food bank volunteer or are they all over the map? It, it initially, for instance, we would have a lot of faith groups that were there mm-hmm. 40 years ago when we got started. Uh, unions were there a lot. So mm-hmm. car unions, the firefighter union, the police union. Mm-hmm. There was a lot of those. So it, it, there was a lot of groups that were coming down, rotary clubs, social service clubs, those right. kind of things. Uh, but now it's all over the map. It's groups, it's individuals, it's families, right? And um, how do you f- find that? Do you find that they have a certain similarities or they're just really that different, but they want to help? I would say the one similarity is they want to help others. Um, Other than that, I would say no. There's Mm -hmm. many different reasons why people want Mm -hmm. to come and volunteer, um, along with wanting to help other people. Um, It's also, we provide a lot more than supporting the community. Mm -hmm. We provide a community in the food bank for people that... Um, maybe need to get out of the house. Um, maybe they're struggling at home with something personal and they need a place to go mm-hmm. where they feel purposeful. And um, I think a lot of people also after retirement, um, kind of having that post-retirement job yeah. of helping out at the food bank. There's a lot um, of that. Yeah. There is a lot of yeah. that. Um, so just finding finding new things to do. Um And we do have a lot of people um, that are new to Canada Mm -hmm. and want to get very involved um, in their new community. Um, School groups is a big one, providing that education. Um, So there's there's many different reasons why people come to Mm -hmm. the food bank. And I think that's what that's what makes us so special is we have just such an array of, of different people and different stories in the building, which is which is amazing. And you have had some good mentorship there, Marianne McDowell, right, yes. who's done a lot of this stuff for years, but also Jane has been down there. And th- there'll be uh, others that help you as well. But uh, people like Marianne or Jane, they, they kind of know how to keep it flowing, right? Like yes. you don't try to say, do this, do this, do this in that sense. It's just a movement of humanity and it just kind of flows. So that the key, I think, at least what Jane tells me, is just making sure there are no blockages. Yeah. Just so that the flow can keep happening. Is that is that how you found it or is it something bigger than that? Um, I think just making sure that everyone feels um, seen and heard mm. is a big thing. Um, that's what keeps our volunteers coming back. Yeah. Um, and we really do, whenever... We have a system that might not be working as well, and a volunteer makes a suggestion, for example. Um, We really do try to put that into use, um, and some of our our best systems have come out of volunteer Mm -hmm. ideas. Um, So I think just making sure that everyone feels recognized and heard Mm -hmm. is is what really keeps that momentum going. And when you direct the volunteers, is it just at the front uh, where people are coming in for help, or are you back in the warehouse, or... What's the scope of your operation? There? Right. So um, when I did those summer grant jobs, I was just up in direct client mm-hmm. services. Um, so with my new role as the volunteer coordinator, I am branching out into yeah. other areas. Um, so our uh, connecting more with our garden volunteers and mm-hmm. our warehouse, our driving um, volunteers as well. So I'm starting to make a lot more connections outside of that direct client services and um, mm-hmm. starting. So that scope is is getting larger as I take take my role on how do you feel about uh, like you're doing that and because you are in the front a lot you also see clients there now i know your main job is is volunteering event coordinator right now Mm -hmm. uh, but previously to that and also now you see what kind of impact does that have on you i know it, it impacts me i can't imagine how it impacts the rest of the volunteers and the staff who are seeing it every day i mean there's just so much um need out there but also hurt 
but also resilience, Mm -hmm. people getting through all of this and working it together. How how does seeing all of those clients affect you? Because it's 6,000 families a month. Yes, Right. So how does it affect you? Um, It it really moves me to Mm -hmm. see um, people coming in, um, especially our greeter role has become such an important role. Mm -hmm. So being that first person that um, is welcoming our clients and trying to make it an open welcome space for people coming into the food bank um, is is really important. So seeing clients coming in um, and some are a little nervous to come to a food Mm -hmm. bank. Um, Some people sometimes are coming in and needing extra help. So having resources available for them and kind of doing a little problem solving with them if we're unable to help them, um, which is, which is really hard. Mm -hmm. I really struggled with that at the very beginning, Mm -hmm. um, having to turn people away, uh, when we're unable to help them. Um, but having all of those other community resources available, um, and doing that problem solving, um, a lot of people are, are just circumstantially trying to make it Mm -hmm. through, um, and just seeing their resilience to whatever they're facing. Um, the same as our volunteers, there's not one, there's many different stories that they have and that's the same with our clients. Mm. Um, there's not one reason why somebody needs to use a food bank. There's, there's so many different ways. Um, and also seeing, you know, not those, those stereotypical ways that some public may see why people need to use a food bank. Mm. Unfortunately, there's, there's a lot more to that. Um, especially with inflation, um, there's been a lot more people with pensions, um, that aren't, they're not making it through anymore. So, um, just seeing all of the different reasons why people need to access a food Mm -hmm. bank, it, it can be, it can be hard, but having that, um, those amazing volunteers at the front that have those conversations, try to provide a listening ear, provide mm-hmm. other resources that they might need. Um, it, it's really, it's really nice yeah. to see. It grounds you for sure. Like I remember at the beginning of the pandemic, we were helping homeless agencies, but then suddenly so much had shut down. So we started um, um, the homeless lunch program mm-hmm. at the food bank. So we did it in partnership with our DC place because they were shut down but they had an industrial kitchen Mm -hmm. and they had great chefs there which was awesome and then we also partnered with a number of different community groups uh to deliver food out to homeless folks but it wasn't just that it was groups like big brothers big sisters uh you know all all sorts of other different groups queer events Mm -hmm. others so we were we were doing all of that kind of stuff and but the food was being delivered like these are hundreds of meals a day so the way it worked is that we paid for it Mm -hmm. rbc place um uh put the the meals together and then groups like 519 pursuit who we partner with a lot they would take it out to those different places and um, I would often go there. We also help uh, YOU, Youth Opportunities Unlimited, with their homeless uh, program. But I would go out and see, uh, the, you know, the, the folks in the in the situations that they were in. And I remember I would come back and, and you know, I'd sit there and I'd have to sit there going through all the numbers. And, we, we you know, we paid over a million dollars during the time of the pandemic mm-hmm. for homeless lunches. But it just, it was never figures. Right. It was always these remarkable people. I, I remember all the, the, the cyclists in London, a bunch of them, they had a club. They all came by and they started kicking all the food from RBC Place and delivering it out to all the different encampments. And I'd yes. never seen these people before. Right. But all of a sudden, it just it, it melted away all the thing about figures and how many meals and all that kind of stuff. And it was just this grand movement of a community trying to take its compassion and get it to the people that need it. But I don't know if I would have been able to make that transition myself without actually going out there and seeing it. Right. So I think for you, the fact that you're able to to see those people and also in the past you've done that as well. But I mm-hmm. presume it's, it's easier to stay grounded when it's like that and, you know, what you're doing and, and what the purpose of all this is for. Right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. There's so much going on down there, Emma. Like, I, I just... I'm amazed, and I go in community, like, we have the 3,000 people on our database as volunteers, but there's probably 2,000 others that are out in community that aren't on the database, who are even right now doing a food drive that we're having, are out there collecting food, they're in grocery stores, they're picking it up, they're bringing it back, they're making meals, you know, whatever it is, it is a community in motion. 
Yes. Uh, but it's a motion of compassion. It's going to where the need is. Yes. You know, it's it's uh, it's really important. But it's grown so much for us as a food bank in the last few years. Like it's it's massive. Yeah. You know, the numbers have gone up ninety one percent in two years yes. of the people that we're helping. Yes. Our volunteers have gone way up. The number of agencies we're helping now is huge mm-hmm. because they're having a tough time. And yet, we we only have like eight or nine staff. Yeah. Right. Like I, I would look at that normally and say, "What? Right? Like how do you folks manage that?" And you're on staff now, and, and we appreciate that. Yeah. But but it's uh, it kind of manages itself, to be honest. I mean, it does need supervision to guide people here and there. The, the volunteers and the people that come in for help and that stuff. It's just it's this constant movement, and yet. They're not doing what's happening often in society where people bump into one another and they get into fights, political fights or partisanship or mm-hmm. arguments about taxes or whatever it is. They bump into one another, and, but they just keep moving in the same direction. And that I find that hugely inspiring. And I would have to think that being a volunteer coordinator, as you are, and an event coordinator, handling something that's moving mm-hmm. is better than handling something that's dead still. Or Absolutely. dividing into all these different yeah. things. And I think you're finding that, and I can see it in you. But we really appreciate you helping us with that, because it's now beyond our capacity is, you know, to be able to, to manage all of that. And it's why we brought you on. But we brought you on because there's so many volunteers, not because there's so few. Yeah. And I would have to think for you, that's a delight as well. It's more work for you, <laughs> and I get that. But to see your community come out like that must be a great thing. It, eh? It's wonderful. Um, in the education talks that I do, the one fun fact that I always make sure that I say is it takes one hour of volunteer time through the whole system to get one single hamper out the door. Mm-hmm. So it it really takes a community to support a community. Exactly. Um, and yeah. I think that every volunteer that comes in our door sees that. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's why it's such a special place that everybody can have their different opinions yeah. and their different experiences. But we were all able to put that aside um, and, and support the community because they yeah. do see that it it takes such a force to, to support yeah. the community that needs it. So yeah. it's, it's a really special thing to be a part of. I'm really glad you're on board, Emma. Thank you. And thanks for doing this. Emma's going to help me to get some other volunteers to come yes. on Volunteer Corner. But I really appreciate you doing this. And it helps us to understand you better. And I can see it doesn't matter if you are uh, a staffer or not. You have a volunteer heart. And that's the thing that really matters. So thank you. I really appreciate it. Of course. Thank you for having me on. No problem.